What is up you guys, Clint here. Welcome back to the channel, Code Commerce. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create your very own portfolio website using VJS styled with Tailwind CSS. Stay tuned because at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you how you can publish your portfolio website that we're about to build with the sponsor of today's video, Hostinger. That way you can showcase your work and your skills and market yourself to potential employers. Now I've secured an exclusive 10% off discount code for you that's gonna give you 10% off all of their current and ongoing sales that Hostinger is offering. Also, their new year sale is still active, you guys. So for anyone who purchases 48 months of web hosting, we'll get an additional three months of hosting completely free and you're gonna get a completely free domain. And guys, let's be real. You have to have a good domain name if you're gonna apply for jobs. So without further ado, let's build this thing. All right, you guys, so here's a quick preview of what we're building our portfolio website. We have some nice buttons at the side to scroll down. We have our timeline here, content creator, Google, Amazon, Facebook. Yes, the most prestigious work history. <laughs> and then we have our projects here. Awesome, awesome. And th these aren't gonna go anywhere. If you wanna make take it upon yourself to, to create some routes, then feel free to do so. And then we finally have a contact form. You guys, this contact form is completely operational. You can actually submit um, a, a form and it's gonna go directly to your email. We're, we're using Typeform for that service there. And it is completely free, you guys. And again, I'm gonna show you how to set all this up. And of course, it is 100% mobile responsive. Everything displays just beautifully, okay? So with, without further ado, let's get started here. So I'm already in VS Code, okay? So let's just go ahead and I'm gonna open up the terminal here using the back tick button. So I'm just gonna, there we go, control back tick. Now, what we wanna do first is create our Vite application, okay? So what I'm gonna say is, I'm gonna say npm create Vite at latest just like so. Now, what it wants us to do is name our project. So I'm just gonna name this, I'll say portfolio hosting, or just like that, that we're gonna be hosting on. Go ahead and hit enter. Now it's wanting a framework. We are gonna be using, we're gonna be using React there. Now we're gonna hit JavaScript and that's it. Now what it wants us to do is actually change the directory into our the what we just created. So I'm gonna say CD, portfolio dash hostinger. Then it wants us to go ahead and install our dependencies. So we're gonna say npm i. What that's gonna do is just install our all of our uh, dependencies necessary for Vite to run. And then what we can do is type npm run dev. And what that's gonna do is just start up our development server here. So that's where we're going right there. I'm just gonna copy that over and we'll paste it right in here. So here it is, that is what we just created, okay? So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and get started here. So just a quick rundown, you guys, of our Hostinger. Like I said, this video is sponsored by Hostinger and you can get 279 a month plus three month freeze, you guys, up to 100 websites, 100 gigabytes of SSD storage, 25,000 visits monthly, a free email, so you can actually have a professional looking email. You know, you don't wanna use a Yahoo or a Gmail account whenever you're contacting potential employers, okay? It just doesn't look professional. You want a real email address to really stand out, okay? Free security site lock has a page uh, builder, which we're not gonna use because we're writing our own custom React code. And then of course, a um, 99 0.9% guaranteed uptime, you guys. So this is awesome, really, really awesome service. I've used Hostinger in the past. So let's go ahead and get started with our build, okay? So what I want to do first, we're gonna be creating a side nav bar, okay? So our side nav, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna toggle our side menu here. So, oh, we, first we need to actually, let's see, open our folder here. That's what we need right there. Okay, so now that we're in here, what we want to do inside of our source folder, okay? Inside of our source folder, I'm gonna create a, another folder. I'm gonna call this folder components, just like so. Now inside of our components folder here, I'm gonna create another file by the name of side nav.jsx. And RAFCE is just gonna generate kind of like our functional component. Uh, outline there. Now we're going to be using React icons, so now would probably probably be a good time to go ahead and 
Let's install React icons. It's a nice little package we're going to use. npmi react dash icons dash dash save. And go ahead and hit enter. And we should see that in our package.json. There we go. Perfect. Now, <clears throat> let's go ahead and, again, since we're writing this complete website with Tailwind CSS, let's go ahead and install Tailwind while we're at it. So let's go to Tailwind CSS. Dot com. I love Tailwind. It's going to be incredibly fast uh, the way we write CSS. So let's go ahead and click get started. And we're using a framework guide and we should be able to find Vite. Here it is right there. Now, first it wants us to do is just create our, um, our V application, which we've already done that. So next we can just follow this command here. So I'm going to copy that and paste it in there like so. Next, we have to run this MPX Tailwind CSS init dash P. So let's go ahead and paste that in there. And what that did right there is create this tailwind.config file along with a couple other files. But this one specifically is important because our next step here, it wants us to copy these inside of our content array there. So the dot slash index HTML is within some quotes. And then also this right here, let's just go ahead and paste that in there like so, perfect. <clears throat> and then our final step here to get tailwind up and running Let's copy this into our index.css file. So we actually don't need all of this. We're, we're just gonna delete that. Um, Cause we're gonna, we're, we're gonna get rid of all that boilerplate code in there. And that is all we need to do you guys. Okay, so let's just go ahead and we can close that. We can close that for now. Now, if we, once we run our server, we'll say npm run dev, we just deleted a lot of CSS. So it's gonna look kind of jacked up here. So as you can see, it's not looking like it did, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and clean all of this up. So we can get rid of all that boilerplate code inside of the app.jsx. Uh, and we can get rid of this state here. Um, and let's get rid of this uh, React logo. And that's gonna be good for now. Okay. so. Okay, so that's it for now. So inside of our app.js, or inside of our components rather, for our side nav, let's go ahead and start writing some React code in here, okay? So I'm gonna shrink that down just a bit here. So what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and we're gonna use our React icons, okay? So I'm gonna use AI outline menu just like so. And we're gonna actually gonna have to import this. So what we're gonna say is import AI outline menu. There it is from react dash icons slash AI. Make sure you add that AI is very, very important. And we can't see this yet, but that's because we need to actually import this into our app.js. So let's go into our app.jsx and we'll say import side nav. That's the name of our file from, and it's gonna be inside of our components folder, slash side nav, whoops, side nav, just like that. All right, so let's just add our component in here. There we go. And as you can see, we already have our, we already have our, our icon right there, perfect. Looking good so far, you guys. <clears throat> All right, so are there any styles added to this? Yeah, so let's go into our app.css. Let's just go ahead and delete this, you guys because I don't want any of these baseline styles to be applied. Basically, we want to add all of our own styles. So it looks like we're getting an error. Um, it's probably trying to import something that we didn't delete. So this app.css, let's just go ahead and get rid of that. And as you can see, zero baseline styles right now, okay? So let's go back into our side nav here and let's start writing some, let's start writing some code here. So what we're gonna have, so we're gonna have a mobile, we're gonna have a mobile nav here. I'm gonna have a, have, I'm gonna bring over our, um, I'm gonna close this down real quick. Basically, I wanna be able to have uh, something to reference what we're building here. So we're gonna have a nice little mobile nav here that we can click, it, it disappears as well, okay? So let's go ahead and build that first, okay? So we're gonna build out our mobile navigation first. So let's go ahead in here and we're gonna be using their use state hook. So I'm just gonna go ahead and import that at the top, use state, just like so. Now, let's say, let's go ahead and add our, um, our state here. So I'm gonna say const 
nav. Okay, we actually need to put this in some brackets. We'll say nav and set nav, just like so. We'll let this equal to use state, and we're gonna set the default value to false. Now we're also gonna have a function, basically like a handle uh, nav function to, to change the state of our nav bar. So we'll say const handle nav, okay? And just gonna be an arrow function here. Then what we want this to do is basically just set our nav to the opposite of its current value. So we're not gonna set it to true or to false, we're just gonna set it to the opposite of, of its current value. So go ahead and get hit save, that's gonna get nice and formatted for us. Okay, so now what we want to do is let's go ahead and I'm going to give some styles to this here. So I'm going to say, oh, not call back. We need class name. And in here, what we're going to say, and this is how we write Tailwind, you guys. We just write it in line in our class name here. So absolute top dash four. It's going to put it right at the top of the page. I'm going to say right dash four. And it's positioning this way since we, we displayed it as position as absolute. And I'm going to give it a Z index of 99. So as you can see, it's up here at the top. That is exactly where we want it. And then to add a media query is very, very simple. Basically anything above the medium breakpoint, I'm gonna say hidden. So that's gonna display none whenever we pass this breakpoint. And as you can see, that's our breakpoint right there. Perfect. So that is what we want right there, you guys. And let's go ahead and add, I'm gonna add our function here. So on click, we wanna run our function that we just created, our handle nav function. And what that's gonna do is just toggle our state back and forth. In fact, if we do inspect and we look at the console down here, whenever we run that, we can say console.log and we'll just say state changed. So whenever we click this, we should see in our console, state has changed every time we click this, okay? So that is how our state works in React. We'll go ahead and close that back down. <clears throat> so next, let's go ahead and create our mobile navigation, okay? And we're gonna use a ternary operator for this, okay? So we'll just add this in right here. And basically what we wanna say here is if our state, if our nav state is true, then what we're gonna do is display some HTML on the screen. Else if it's not true, then we're gonna display some different HTML on the screen here, okay? So what we wanna say in here, and don't worry that we're getting this, um, we're, we're getting these uh, these errors. We're gonna change that as soon as we add in some divs in here. And I'm just gonna copy that down and paste that in there. That should take away all the errors we see there. So what this is just a ternary operator, basically saying if our nav state is true, then we're gonna show this code, which is gonna be our, our nav bar, our, our, our um, our nav bar just like this. And if it's not true, then it's not gonna show anything. Or in fact, it's gonna show what it's gonna look like um, just like this off to the side there, okay? So I hope that makes sense there. So let's go back here. And what we're gonna say, if the nav is true, so like I said, we're doing our our, our nav bar first here. Then let's give a, uh, a link here. We're gonna have an anchor tag. And we're gonna give this, we'll just say to uh, to the main right now, which we haven't, identified that yet, but we will. And then inside here, I'm gonna have an AI outline menu, or sorry, outline home, just like that. And we can actually give some size properties to React icons, just like so. And I'm gonna say size of 20. And then just below this, I'm gonna give this a span, span just like that. And inside here, I'm just gonna say home, just like so. Now inside here, this class, this span, I'm gonna give this a class name. And this span's class is gonna be padding left of four, just like so. Perfect. Now for this div, I'm gonna go ahead and let's just go ahead and give this a class name here. And this is gonna be our, basically our container that we see right here. So our full, full width, full height screen here. So what I'm gonna say in here is, I'm gonna say it's gonna be a position of fixed with full height of screen, which is a hundred viewport heights. The background, I'm gonna say background white, and then we actually give some opacity to it, just like doing that by 90. If we hover over this, you can kind of see what it is right there. Basically it's a white with an opacity of 0.9. We want to display flex, flex column. And then I wanna say justify center. And then we'll say item center. And then we're gonna use Z20 for our Z index. 
So we can't actually see anything yet here, but let's go ahead and let's go ahead and I'm gonna refresh that. Let's go ahead and add some more um, some more styling in here. So we have our home in here, okay? So next what we wanna do is let's do our, so outline home. So next let's add a, another icon. It's gonna be a projects icon. Or let's, let's style this uh, anchor tag first. So for this anchor tag for the main, we'll say class name. Now for our class name, what we're gonna say is a width of, I'm gonna say 75%. And these brackets are actually a way for that we can add some custom values in, in Tailwind. So I'm gonna say justify, justify center, okay? And I wanna be able to see this on the screen. So if we go ahead and click that nav, where is it? So if nav is true, we should show everything. And be able to see. Looks like we're getting an error already. So let's see. AI outline is not defined. Oh, that's because we need to import it up here. AI outline home, just like that. And all these can be imported on the same line if they have that same little pretext there. So if we just go ahead and refresh, as you can see, now our state is true and we can kind of start to see our, uh, our elements on the screen. Okay, so now what we're gonna say is, so we'll say justify center here. What we're also gonna wanna do for this anchor tag is we're gonna say items center, there we go. I'm gonna say rounded full, which is just like adding a border radius. I'm gonna say shadow large. And this is how easy it is. You don't have to mess around with all this box shadow and all these custom values. You just say shadow dash large and your element has a shadow around it. So I'm gonna say BG gray 100 shadow. We can actually change the shadow color. I'm gonna say shadow gray 400. I'm gonna say M dash two for the margin of, um, it's gonna be eight pixels. And then P dash four is the padding of 16 pixels. I want the cursor to be pointer. There we go. And then whenever we hover, this is how we add a hover selector, hover colon, I'll, I'll say scale. Uh, we'll say scale 110. And then we can say ease in and then just give it a duration of we'll say 200 just like so. So go ahead and save that so you get nice and formatted. So whenever we hover over that, you see a nice little scale. All right. So now <clears throat> we have our C fixed h of screen that looks good so what i want to do next is let's go ahead and i'm going to add a or what we should do is probably just copy this down so we can add in our, our other um add in our other links here so we have that one was home we're also going to have a work projects and resume so i'm just going to select this anchor tag and i'm going to copy it down whoops i'm going to copy it down so we're gonna have a see a work, projects, resume, and then a contact. So after home, next one's gonna be work. We'll say work, and then this one is gonna be projects. And we'll say resume, just like that. Okay, perfect. So, and then, oh, we need a contact as well. So this one's gonna be contact. There we go, perfect. And you see, we can toggle that. Uh, it's not looking quite right yet, but that's okay. So next, what we want to do is, oh, this should be displaying in the middle and it's not. So if we look up here, um, we're here at the, at the outer diff here. I said with a full, which is saying with hundred percent, this is actually supposed to say H dash screen, which is a uh, hundred viewport heights is what that means. So as you can see, we fixed that and now it's starting to look a little bit better. So perfect. And we have our nice uh, hover effect. Now let's go ahead and um, I'm gonna change up some icons, okay? So we, we have the first one as AI outline home. The next one is gonna be, we'll say GR projects, just like that. Now we actually need to import this. So let's go ahead and import this. And it actually has to be on a different line, just like so, since it's from, React icons, but not AI. It's gonna be from GGR, just like so. And that should be what we need there. So React dash icons, GR, and looks like we're getting GR projects. Let's see, it's not liking something here. I'm gonna go ahead and refresh. Ah, there it is, not sure what that was about. So yeah, there, there's our projects there. 
And now next, we're gonna want to do, we have an AI outline project. So I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and import these. AI outline project. And then we're also gonna use something called BS-person. So let's just go ahead and import that. We'll say import BS person. And that one's gonna be from react-icons slash BS. And we're also gonna have an AI outline mail. So we'll just add this one in on the same line, AI outline mail, just like so. So let's go ahead and save that. And we'll come down here. So we have the AI outline project, see, AI, GR projects. Next one is gonna be AI outline project. Should be right here, perfect. And then for our resume, we're saying BS person. And then for our contact, it's gonna be AI outline mail. All right, perfect. So there you have it, you guys. Everything is looking clean there, very, very nice. Let's go ahead and save. So that's basically it for our mobile nav. And look at that, you guys, that's how easy it is to do a mobile nav in React using some state and some, some React icons and Tailwind CSS. So I'm gonna go ahead and refresh so it gets that, that uh, those errors off the screen. So let's go back to our React code here. And we're using this ternary operator, like I said. So if nav is true, then we're gonna be showing this code right here. And we're using the parentheses whenever we're um, displaying, rendering out uh, elements onto the page in React. So if nav is true, we're gonna show this. Else, if it's not true, what we can show is actually don't even need to show a div. We can just add in an empty, empty, um, empty string there, okay? And then what we're gonna want to have here, okay? So if we just go ahead and refresh, what we're gonna code now are our side buttons here, which you can't see them on smaller devices, but they're gonna be these right there, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and leave the screen at that width so we can see, so we can see them there. So this is what we're gonna be coding right here. Nice little hover effect as well. So let's go back here. And again, we can't see our, our side menu, our button there because I shrunk down to a smaller to a smaller screen. So next, let's add our code. And our code is gonna go right below these little brackets there. This is where our code is gonna go. And what we're gonna say here, so we're gonna have a div. Then inside here, we're gonna have a, another div. And then we're gonna have our anchor tag. And this one is gonna be, I'll just say main, just like that there. And we'll come back and change all these other ones here, all the, where they go to. So inside of our anchor tag, we're gonna have an AI outline home, just like so. And basically we're gonna have all of the, everything that we did up above. So let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and do that. But you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and add a class name first. So I'm gonna go ahead and style this, that way whenever we copy it down, it's gonna be nice and neat. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and give this some class name as well, okay? So class name. So what we wanna say is anything above the medium breakpoint, we're gonna display as block. Else, and Tailwind is a mobile first approach. So all the styles we add are gonna be at a min width approach. And then we have to add media queries um, to specify anything else. So anything above the medium breakpoint, and that's how we add a breakpoint in Tailwind. If we hover, you can see anything above medium, minimum width 768, it's gonna display block. Otherwise, it's gonna be hidden, okay? So right now you can see that home button, if we shrink down past our breakpoint here, you can set the top, right at our breakpoint there, it disappears. So hope that helps you understand the Tailwind here. So what we wanna say is, I'm gonna say fixed, top, and I'm gonna use our brackets. And the brackets, again, like the, whenever we use brackets, we can add custom values and Tailwind. So that's where we want it right there, kind of about the medium part of the page there. And then, and here I'm gonna give this a class name and we're gonna have actually have multiple icons in here, of course. So I'm just going, I want these display as flex and I'm gonna say flex column. So they're, they're kind of down here in a column on the left side of the page. Now for our anchor tag here, let's go ahead and say, I'm gonna say rounded dash fulls, give a nice border radius, shadow dash LG for shadow large. And whoop, if I can spell that shadow dash large. Okay. And then what we'll say is uh, BG gray 100. And we'll say shadow gray 400. I'm gonna say margin 
of two, which is actually going to be four or sorry, eight pixels there goes by multiples of, of, of eight or four. So four would be eight pixels. Um, eight would be, um, um, margin dash eight would be uh, 16 or sorry, 32 pixels. So then we have, let's say a padding of four, which is going to be one Rem say cursor, cursor pointer, and then anything on hover, let's scale 110, ease in, and then duration, we'll say duration 300. So there it is, pretty nice right there. A nice little scale there, perfect. Now, let's go ahead and I'm gonna give this a size property here of 20, so it's just a little bit bigger, perfect. Now what we wanna do is actually copy this down and um, so we can have some, some more, um, copy all these down so we can have all our other icons. So I'm just gonna copy these down a handful of times. So this one is gonna be GR projects and then we're gonna have see AI outline project. And then this one's gonna be BS person. We've already imported all these. And then the last one is gonna be our, um, our contact, which is the AI outline mail there we go we've already imported all of these remember so we don't have to mess around with any of that so there we have you guys awesome that's looking good so um we have these I, let's go ahead and add in these ids so we have to come back and do this later so um for projects we'll say we'll say work or sorry let's say work um for this one and then this one's going to be projects and then we'll say uh, main's fine because that's not actually going to go anywhere. And this one will say contact just like so. And let's go do these up here. Um, we'll say this one's going to be contact. And then that one's not going to go anywhere. Be as person. Um, we can just say main's fine. And then for this one, we can say projects. And then we'll have yeah, work. And we'll leave the, the top one at main. This is looking good. So there we have it, you guys. Now it's not gonna go anywhere because we don't have any other components, but let's open this up, make sure everything is responsive, correct? Now we get below this medium breakpoint and they should disappear. And then we have this, we can toggle our menu. So there you have you guys, awesome. Everything is looking good so far, you guys. Smash the like button if you feel like you're getting some value out of this. And let's go ahead and move on to our um, move on to our next our next component, which is going to be our a background image right there. Okay, so that's going to be a new component. Okay, so I'm going to Command B to toggle our sidebar, and I'm going to create a new file. Say main dot jsx rafce is going to get our functional component in here, and we're using this awesome React typed package. I'm going to show you how to incorporate. So really, really awesome. Kind of levels up your portfolio there. And you don't actually have to write any custom uh, JavaScript or anything like that. So they make it so simple for us. Okay, so for our main component, what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and give this an ID of main. And that way we can kind of scroll to it that we added our, our scrolling to. Now let's have an image. Now I don't actually have, um, the image I'm gonna use is not gonna be a local image. It's just gonna be, um, an endpoint here that I can link to. So what I'm gonna say here is, we'll say image just like so, and I'm just gonna paste in the endpoint. Basically, it's just an image from Unsplash. Feel free to use uh, what other, whatever image you'd like to use, okay? And then let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and give this a class name here. And we can't see anything yet because we haven't imported yet. So let's go ahead and go to our app.js and we'll import main. There we go. And we can just copy that down. We'll change this main, main. And now we should at least see our image on the screen. Perfect. When we refresh that, we get rid of all that errors there. So yeah, that's looking good so far, you guys. Now let's go ahead and style this thing. Um, I'm gonna add some space in there. So for our class name, what do we, how do we want this to be displayed? So what I'm gonna say is with a full H of screen, we want it to take up the complete um, width and height of the screen. Now it's kind of distorted, so we can say object cover, and that way it's not gonna be like distorted in any way. And I actually wanna flip this. We'll say object, 
object left. There we go. And um, so that just moved it over. Let's let's flip it. We can say scale X and we'll just say minus one. That should flip it entirely. So that looks good right there, you guys. Awesome. Now I wanna have a uh, an overlay on this thing. So let's go ahead and create another div here. It's gonna be a white overlay. I'm gonna give this a class name. So again, with full H screen, it's gonna take the, the entire width and height of that uh, image component. And it's gonna say absolute, we'll say top zero, left zero, then BG white, okay? And that's all we need to do, but I actually wanna be able to see through it. So I'm just gonna give it an opacity of a 50 there. So that's looking good right there, you guys. Awesome, looking good so far. Don't worry about that error. If we just refresh, they go away. So um, I wish all the errors were that easy. Uh, so next, let's go ahead and we're gonna have a kind of a container here for our text, just like that. So what we'll say here is, let's see here. So we're gonna have a div and then we're gonna have an H1. I'm just gonna say, I'm John. You can say whatever name you want. And then under the H1, we're gonna have an H2. And this is gonna say, I'm a, and then we're gonna leave this in here, sorry, and we don't need an A tag. In here is we're gonna have our React typed uh, package. So if we just look for, let's see, React typed uh, package, let's see what comes up. This is it right here, that first one, React dash typed. No, this is actually not it. So let's go back, see React typed animation. All right, there it is, okay. This is it right here, you guys. So let's come down here and we're gonna copy that right there. We need to stop our server. There we go. And we'll just make sure that that did install React type animation, perfect. That's what we needed right there, you guys. Okay, and this is really, really awesome. Has some really awesome tools. So I'm gonna say npm run dev. I was trying to not run and there we go. Okay, so npm run dev. Now, what we're gonna do is we need to import type animation. So let's go ahead and say, shut down our sidebar there. Import, and what we're gonna say is type animation, just like that from, it's gonna be react type dash animation, just like that there. And what we can actually do just to make this easy, we can actually just copy some of this. So, so we already imported that there. So next, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select that component in there and I'm gonna paste it in right over here on the left. So let's go ahead and save that. And I just pasted it in right underneath my text is actually still inside our uh, H2, okay? Section C, it's actually typing right there. So that's just kind of like the boilerplate code that comes with it. So I'm gonna change a few things. So this font size style, I'm gonna change that to 1EM and then let's add, let's say padding left, I'm just gonna say five pixels there. Now this repeat infinity, yes, cursor true, yes, wrapper div, that's fine. Um, we don't need um, this uh, this arrow function or anything like that. So we can actually delete that. We don't need it to, as you can see, it was kind of just console out logging whenever it was um, running the function. So what we're gonna type in here is our different uh, cases here. So what we're gonna say is, developer just like that and we'll say coder and then um we can let's add another here we'll say tech enthusiast just like that and we'll add another time out there so as you can see let's go ahead and refresh this so as you can see i'm a developer i'm a coder enthusiast and you can change this right now it's set to two seconds or this one's at one second Let's just change them all to two. You can change a three to four, it doesn't really matter. So perfect, that's what we want right there, you guys. Now let's go ahead and I'm gonna add in some, a um, couple more things here. Let's do our icons next. So we're gonna do that just below our H2, okay? So let's create another div and um, inside this div, what we're gonna have is our icons. So we're gonna have FA, Twitter, just like that. And then we're gonna have an FA Facebook F, just like so. Then we're having FA Instagram, just like so, perfect. And then let's also have FA linked, LinkedIn in, I believe is what it needs to be. 
and we actually need to import all these as well. So let's say import FA Twitter, and actually these need to be in curly brackets, FA Twitter, just like that. FA Facebook F, FA Instagram, and FA LinkedIn. Then these are gonna be from react-icons slash FA. So there we have it, you have our icons down there. So let's go ahead and add, that's all of our um, code essentially for now. Um, real quick, I'm just gonna add a size property. So I'm holding down the option button right now if you're on a Mac, so we can just type on multiple lines. I'm just gonna give this a, a, a sizing attribute of 20. And then I'm gonna give this a class name as well. That's gonna say cursor cursor pointer. So that way, whenever we hover, you have a little cursor, okay? And you can, if you wanna set some links to go up to your Twitter, your Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, obviously that would be a good idea because you guys, this remember this video or this, uh, this build is going to be live. By the end of this build, it's gonna be completely live so you can start applying for jobs and actually sending them a professional portfolio, okay? So we have our width full screen, that's perfect. Now on here, okay, we're gonna set this up right here. So we don't actually, we're gonna add just a little container here. So let's give this a class name. And what we're gonna say is max width of, again, here come our custom values with our brackets for Tailwind 700 pixels. I'm gonna say margin auto. I'm gonna say height full. I'm gonna say, whoop, height full, uh, width full. We're gonna display flex. Flex column, we'll say justify center, then anything above large, I'm gonna say items start, and then item center over here, okay? So there we have it, okay? That's what we want right there. And if we shrink down, perfect, they're perfectly centered. Everything's looking good, okay? So next, let's move on here. And what we're gonna have next, so for our H1, let's give this some, some styling here, so class name. I'm gonna say uh, anything above small um, text 5XL, otherwise it's gonna be text 4XL. There we go, perfect. Font bold, and we'll say text gray 800. So on the number here, you can go down to, I believe 100 up to eight or 900, um, the smaller the number. It has to be 100, it can't be like 99 or 72. It has to be 100 or 200. Um, the lighter you go, the darker it is. That's how Tailwind works. So 800 is the darkest of, of this gray. Now for this H2, so since we have uh, our animation here, so I'm gonna say class name. What I wanna say is flex, okay? So that should line it up in a line. You have our, our text in a line there. So text, and I'm going to say, what I'm gonna say, it's anything above small, we'll say text 3XL, otherwise text 2XL. Padding of top of four, and then we'll say text gray 800, just like so, okay, perfect. So that is looking good. Look at that, you guys. Everything is starting to look pretty good so far is looking professional. You're gonna be having a job in no time. Okay, so let's go down here to this div. This is a basically a container for all of our icons. I'm gonna give this a class name here. So I'm gonna display flex, uh, justify between padding top of six. And I'm gonna say a max width of, and then again, here come our custom values, 200 pixels. We'll say width full. So that should spread everything out. Perfect, that looks good. That looks good right there, okay? So let's go ahead and save, gets nice and formatted. That is it, you guys. Um, make sure we don't have any errors, perfect. If we shrink this down, everything is completely responsive. Awesome. So you guys, next what I wanna do is our timeline. We can close that package. Next what I want to do is our timeline right here, okay? Very professional looking timeline. Notice it displays just perfectly with our icons and whenever we shrink down, it takes up the whole uh, width of the screen. So everything is kind of moved over. So everything is looking good. All right, so let's toggle our sidebar here and we can close that main for now. And what we wanna go into um, create next is gonna be, let's say our, let's do our, we're gonna do our timeline of course. So we'll say, let's go ahead and create the component in here, work.jsx, 
R-A-F-C-E. And we're actually going to have two components to kind of just keep things, uh, keep things clean. So what we're going to have is this is going to be one component right here, this work, then each individual work item we can say is going to be an additional component. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. It's just for the sake of the video and, and keeping them clean, we're just going to do it that way. And you know, that's why we have react. So we can have individual components to make things uh, easier to work with. So for our work.jsx, what we're going to have here is, so we actually need some data to pass in here. Um, and you can, you can obviously you're going to want to use your own data, but what, what we're going to do is just type this in here. So inside of our, let's go ahead and import our work item first. So we'll say import work item from just dot slash work item, just like that. So for our data, we're going to paste our data in here. So I'm going to say const data and it's just going to be an array it's going to be an array of objects so basically i pasted in um just four different things here and each one is um it's going to have a, a year which is this right there it's going to have a title it's going to have a duration just like how long we worked at that um at that employer and then it's going to have a details and this is just our detail section okay so and this is again this is stored just an uh, uh an array of objects in there okay and so let's go into our down here into our, our component here. We're returning some actual uh, JSX on the screen. And we need to go ahead and let's import this. So we'll say work. Whoops, just like that. So import work from components. So such work, just like that. Okay, perfect. There we have it. You can see a work down there. There it is. Now, this is going to be pretty easy here. So let's go ahead and we want to give this an ID of work because remember that's what we're scrolling to when we're using our, our uh, smooth scrolling. So I'm going to give this a max width of let's say 1040 pixels, just like that. And we'll say margin auto, anything above medium. I'm going to say padding left of 20, then we'll say P dash four and then P Y. So padding on the, on the Y axis, um, up and down is going to be 16. So now we have that, that little nice little padding in there. So then we're going to have an H one and, uh, let's see here. So we're going to say work and let's go ahead and give this some styling. I could have just made this some global styling as well. I probably should have. So we can do that to kind of prevent us from rewriting code. So I'm gonna give this a color. So text, we could say red 500 or whatever we wanna say. Again, Tailwind, I'm gonna use a custom value, a custom hex code. So we'll say 001B5E. Uh, and again, if we're in these brackets, that means we can use our custom, our custom values, okay? So there you have it, okay? So next, what we want to do is, so what we're gonna do is actually map through our work item here. So for work, what we're going to do, how we're going to map through this in React, let's open up some curly brackets and we stored this uh, array of objects by the name of data. So what we can say is data dot map. And then uh, this is just going to be an arrow function. And since we're rendering out um, elements on the screen, we're going to use, um, we're going to use um, parentheses in here instead of uh, curly brackets. And so what we're gonna say, I'm just gonna say item, and then we're gonna give it an ID, and you say IDX. Um, doesn't really matter what ID you give it. So inside here, we're gonna, we're using mapping through, each one's gonna be item, and then we're gonna have a work item, just like so. And again, we should have just imported this at the top, this is gonna be our work item component. And we're gonna pass through um, some properties in here, okay? So we're gonna have a key, React like, likes us to have keys, so we're gonna say IDX, and then we're gonna have, again, we're gonna have the year to pa pass through the title. We're gonna pass through the duration and of course the details. So we're gonna say year here is equal to item dot year. And that's where we're getting item, that one right there. And then we're gonna have, let's see, title equal to item dot title. And then we're gonna have the duration equal to item dot duration. Um, spell this right. There we go. Item dot duration, and then the details is equal to item dot details. 
So let's go ahead and save that. That's perfect. And that's actually all we need to do for this component, okay? So as you can see, it's rendering through um, each, uh, each object in our array here, which we have four objects, and it's, uh, it's iterating through each one there. So it's just displaying a work item on the screen because that's, that's all that's in there. But what we're gonna do is go in here and actually pass through uh, and grab the, the data dynamically, okay? So what we're gonna say here, I'm just gonna leave that for now. Let's go ahead and add in some, um, some some code here. So I actually want this to be an, an ordered list, okay? And I'm gonna give this a class name and I'm gonna say flex, I wanna display as flex column. Anything above medium, I wanna display as a row. And then we'll say relative, I'm gonna say border left and then border is going to be a stone color 200 so and if you hover over this you guys you actually see the color um there we go so you can actually see our little rgb color okay so we can't really see anything yet and that's okay so inside here we're actually going to have a list item we can go ahead and get rid of that now a list item then we're gonna have a div here and this is actually just going to be we can make this a self-closing div just like so because this is actually just going to be a little that div is going to be that little circle that you see right there that's what that div is that we just created and then underneath that we're going to have a p tag and we're going to have a, a span and inside here we're going to have the year and let's just go ahead and copy this down a couple of times so we have the year title duration and then this one is going to be a details but this one actually let's let's get rid of that because we're actually going to uh, make this an, another p tag right below there so we'll say details okay so we're actually not going to be able to see anything on the screen because we're not taking in um any of our, of our children here so what we're going to say here is we're just kind of destructuring we could just say item you know then say item dot year but to kind of destructure and keep things a little more clear and stay a little more modern, we can just say year, title, duration, and details. And again, we're passing these through right here. So through our year, item.year, and all that, all that there. So if we scroll down, as you can see, we're actually getting all of our data that's in our, our uh, parent component from our, our data array of objects. So our 2020 content creator, three years, 2017, I worked at Google, 2015, I worked at Amazon, 2012, I worked at Facebook. Um, I hope you don't believe all that. I did not really work at any of those places. So, okay, so for our list item, let's go ahead and start styling this stuff here. So we're saying margin bottom 10, okay? And then we'll say margin left uh, four. There we go. And as you can see, there's our little line there. And again, you guys, these numbers, they're not actually 10 pixels or four, like I said, tailwind counts by fours. So if we hover over that, you can see that four is one rim, which is also 16 pixels. So for this div, let's give this our little, our little circle there. So we'll say absolute, I'm gonna say width of three, height of three, so tiny little circle there, BG stone 200, want it to be rounded full, MT 1.5. Run that so six pixels, and we'll say um, minus left 1.5, then border, border white right there. So, there you go, there's our little circles. Perfect, everything's looking good. So, next for our p tag, let's give this a class name. So, I want this to display flex, I want it to wrap, so we'll say flex wrap, a gap of four flex row. Item center, justify start, text, SM, uh, sorry, XS, we're gonna say extra small. There we go. Then anything above medium, I'll say text, text small. So there you have it. Everything's looking good. If we shrink down, it should take up the full width of the screen, perfect. And all right, everything is looking good. All right, you guys, smash the like button if you feel like you're getting some value out of this. I'm so pumped to uh, be hosting this thing at the end of the video. Make sure you stay tuned for that. If you want to get a job and get this thing hosted for everybody to see, make sure you stay tuned. So PX2, PY of 1, I'm going to say font, semi-bold there, text white. And let's give this a background. Um, we'll say this is going to be 001 
B5E, kind of like a dark navy blue there. Perfect. And let's just give it a little rounded medium. There you go. All right, perfect. Now next, uh, for this span here, for the title, I'm gonna give that class name for our title. I'm gonna say text, LG for text large. Font is gonna be semi-bold. And then text is, let's say 001, again, B5E, same color. Perfect. That is looking good so far, you guys. Then let's do this span here. So class name for the, our duration. Margin on the y-axis of one, I want to say text, small. Font is going to be normal. Leading, none. That's going to even it out a little bit. And then we'll say text stone 400. Perfect. Now let's do our details. And for our details, for our details, MY2, get a little margin. It's text base font normal. Text stone 500. All right. So let's give that a save. All right, you guys, this should clear up. No errors there. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that. Let's have a look on smaller devices. Everything is displaying beautifully, you guys. And we do have this hooked up now. So we click on uh, work. Oh, <laughs> our menu didn't close. We're going to come back and fix that. Also, this we need to fix this as well. I just noticed that. So we're going to come back and fix that here in, in, a, in a little bit. Okay. So um, what do we need to do? So next, what we need to do is, let's see here. And I'm gonna, we still have our side nav open. Um, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and close the side nav. And then let's close our, um, see what is next here. Let me scroll back out. So next we have our projects in here. Okay. So let's, yeah, let's work on our projects right now. You guys, let's do that. So for our projects, Let's create a new component in here. Say projects.jsx, okay. Our AFCE is gonna get our functional component. Now inside of our assets folder, okay. Inside of our assets folder, I'm actually gonna just pull through, um, I'm gonna pull through all of the images that I'm gonna be, that I'm gonna be using. So let's just pull these in here. Um, Let's see. Yes. Sorry. Pull these from another file. So this crypto, this Netflix, these are just other bills I, I've, I've, uh, I've done in the past. So <laughs> nice little, little image there that we have. Perfect. So, and these are the images that we're going to be displaying on our screen here. So, and I don't know if we're going to use that. We probably won't use that other picture, but, um, yeah, there we have our images right there. So let's go ahead and get those. Let's go ahead and get those on the screen with our projects file here. So let's go into our app um, right here. We're going to say projects. Okay. And let's go ahead and bring that down. Projects. Projects. There we go. Perfect. Now for our projects, let's see here for our projects. We're going to actually going to have a, um, we're kind of like what we did before. We're going to have a projects with our, with our work and our work item. So we're going to have kind of like two components to kind of make things a little bit easier and um, kind of clean up some of the code here. So let's go ahead and just do that while we're at it. I have a project item.jsx as well. So get our functional component in there already. No class-based components, you guys. We're not using none of that stuff. Okay, so let's, let's do this first. Let's import our images. So I'm going to import, um, I'm going to say project item first from project item. So now we imported our, our component there. Okay. So next let's, let's get our images. So I'm going to import, I'm going to say property image using some camel case here from, we'll say dot, dot, we have these in assets, assets. There we go. Slash property. Is that property.jpg? There we go. Now I'm going to copy this down a handful of times. This one is going to be crypto IMG. It's from crypto. There we go. And this one's going to be Netflix IMG from Netflix. And then the final one was a, a Twitch build. There we go. And we'll say Twitch. 
Oh, forgot to add yeah, IMG. There we go. Okay. So now we have imported our images. Okay. So let's go ahead and for our projects here, let's go ahead and give this an ID of projects. So remember we can grab something for our smooth scrolling. So we're going to give this a class name and we need a max width of, uh, we'll say 1040 pixels to keep it all consistent margin of auto. So it sits in the middle of the page, anything above medium breakpoint. We actually want the, which is where our, 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 when our icons start to show, we want to say padding left of 20 and that's going to like kind of push everything over just like we did there. So it's not, um, we don't want it to be hiding behind our icons. Padding for then PY of 16, just add some padding on the X, uh, X and Y axis here. So for our H1, we're going to say projects here. And then we'll have a P tag. We'll say lorem. Uh, we'll say lorem 30. Let's go ahead and say if that looks good there. Perfect. And if that's too much, we can, we can drop that down a little bit. So for our class name, I should add added these some, some global styles, but that's okay. Text for Excel font bold, uh, say text center. There it is text center. Um, and then that text is going to be zero zero one B five E. So that blue color, perfect. And for this one here, say class name text center, and then we'll say P Y eight to give it some padding on the Y axis there. Now, next inside of our uh, projects here, let's create another div and we're going to have our grid or sorry, project item in here. And there we go. Perfect. And let's go ahead and let's go ahead and give this a class name. So we, we can't really see anything. We said grabbing that project item, but I'm going to display this as grid and anything above small. We're going to say grid columns two then a gap of 12. There we go. And I guess I should have just copied this down. We're gonna have four. So this is what we're doing with our, our grid. So anything, uh, if we if we go up, it's just gonna display two. If we get down smaller, it should just display one. There we go, perfect. And um, that is basically it. We need to add a couple more things in here. Um, Let's go ahead and give this some properties. So for our image, we're going to give it an image. And then of course a title, um, for the title, I'm going to say crypto app for the first one. Then this next one, I'm going to say proper property app. And then it's going to be Netflix. And then we'll say Twitch. There we go. Now in here, this is the crypto image and this one's the property. So we'll say, property image next one's the netflix we'll say netflix img and then of course uh, twitch img perfect so let's go ahead and save that so we haven't really done much inside of our project item so it's just displaying all of this just this project item right there so let's go ahead and um let's go ahead and do this one next so what we're going to have here is our image um and for our image, we're going to be passing through. Whoops, we're going to be passing through IMG. So we're kind of destructuring here. So let's go ahead and take that in. We'll take in the title as well. So now we should see at least an image. So yeah, everything's displaying properly. So that's good. That's good. And I'm just going to leave this uh, as a little slash in there. Uh, if you want to pass in through the title, you could do that as well, um, and that'd be, that'd be fine. So. Next, we're going to have a, another div and inside here, we're going to have our H3. So let's go ahead and say title. So we're probably not going to be able to see it. Yeah, there it is. Perfect. So we actually want this to display, uh, whenever we hover, we're going to have that nice uh, styled effect. Okay. So let's go ahead and style this outline. There's out outermost one first. So we want to display as relative, uh, position, uh, position, relative display flex items center when justify not start, but center height is going to be auto width is going to be a hundred percent shadow LG. All right, let's do XL. There you go. Perfect. Perfect. And now we'll say shadow gray. Uh, can you spell that shadow gray 400 rounded is going to be XL and we want to say group. Okay. So we're using group to kind of 
we're going to use, whenever we hover on something, it's going to be attached to this outermost div. So all you have to do is add a group in there and I'll show you where we add that elsewhere. So on the hover effect, we're going to say BG, we use a gradient to right, so to R. Okay, then we just say from gray 200 to, and this is our, our, our blue that we've been using. It is, see, 001B5E. Could have made this a, a global variable, variable, I guess would have made sense. But as you can see, as we hover, you can kind of see it poking through um, on the back there. So we actually need to give this uh, image here a class name. And for our image, we'll say rounded XL. And then here we're grabbing our group. So group, hover, opacity, 10, just like that. So if we hover over here, hey, as you can see, that looks pretty good right there. All right. So everything is looking good, you guys. So um, still a few more things to do, but that's looking good so far. So for this div here, let's uh, say, we'll give this a class name, and this one's gonna say hidden, and then we'll say group dash hover, we're gonna display as block, be absolute, we'll say top 50%, left, using our custom values here, 50%, and we'll say translate X, Whoops, we'll say negative 50% and translate Y, negative 50%. Smash the like button, you guys, if you're liking Tailwind. If this is the first time you use Tailwind, isn't it awesome? How fast are we writing this CSS? And once you get you know, real good at it, you build a couple projects, you're gonna start remembering this stuff. It just, you can just fly through it. So font bold, we'll say text white, uh, we'll say tracking, wider than text center. Let's see how that is. Perfect, that's looking good so far, you guys. Looking good. So below this H3, let's add some more information. We'll say React JS. Again, um, so if this was built in React or Next, I'm just gonna leave them all right now. We're not gonna make that dynamic. So we're not gonna pass through any props. It's just gonna, it's just gonna say what it says. So below that uh, P tag, we're gonna have an anchor tag, maybe a little slash there. And then we'll say, um, more info. And again, this isn't going to go anywhere. If you want to add, um, take it upon yourself to add some extra stuff, then feel free. So say PB dash four padding, bottom four padding top. We'll say two text, white text center. And then for this anchor tag, um, the anchor tag itself, ain't going to get any class name, but this P tag will, and it's going to say text center, uh, P dash three for some padding rounded large. We'll say BG white text gray, 700 and we'll say font bold and then we'll say cursor pointer we'll say text uh text large so let's go and give it a hover perfect that is looking good you guys i'm going to add a uh, border radius to our button here um so let's say that doesn't look right yeah let's just add Let's say rounded. Oh, I, I did add it. I just didn't. I just typed it wrong. Ah, perfect. There you go. Looking good. Now, if we shrink down past the breakpoint, everything uh, displays properly. It takes up the whole width of the screen. If we go down all the way, perfect. That is looking good, you guys. Looking good. Looking good. I still, we need to fix this. I know, but as you can see, want to make sure. Oh, well, let's add uh, real quick. So let's go into our index.css. And what I'm gonna say here, I actually wanna add like the scroll behavior. So we can just kind of apply to apply to all. And we're just gonna say scroll behavior smooth. So let's see how that works. Hey, there we go. All right, nice. Very, very nice. Smash the like button, you guys. Again, I hope you're getting some value out of this. Next, we're gonna do our contact form. And you guys, this is gonna, I'm zooming in a bit there. This is gonna actually submit to a back end here. So we'll say Clint, uh, we'll say one, two, three, my email at Gmail, my subject, and then my message. I'm gonna show you how this how this connects, okay? Send message, thank you. And this is gonna be done through gitform.io, gitform.io, um, give an account. Now as you can see, let's see here. Pretty sure this is what I'm registered through. Mm. I think I'm registered through a different one. That's okay, I'm gonna show you how it works 
and it's gonna we're gonna have it working perfectly by the end of the video okay so let's go back here and let's actually work on our form. I'm not sure if this is the right account or not, but that's okay. So what we're going to do, let's finish up and actually build out, uh, build out that, that contact form. Okay. So I'm going to shrink that down a bit and let's go in here into our components. I'm going to create the contact dot JSX RAF CE. It's going to generate our functional component in here. Okay. I'm going to minimize that. So for our, for our contact, what we're going to do here, Let's go ahead and we can go ahead and do it with this git form. Yeah, we'll, we'll use this one, so we'll set it up. So for this div here, I'm gonna give it an ID of contact and then a class name. Let's go ahead and give it a class name. I'm gonna say max width, uh, 1040 pixels, margin auto, anything above medium. So again, padding left 20, then we'll say P-4, then PY. 16 and let's bring this into we can close the work and work item project project item and let's bring this in here so contact just like so oops and we'll say contact contact so let's see should have our contact down here somewhere To refresh all right so where we're we gonna add it here where's our contact oh we don't have anything in there no so let's add our h1 contact just to make sure it's in there yeah there it is cool so for our h1 let's give this a class whoops give this a class name and we'll say py for give it padding text for xl font bold we'll say text center then text let's use our Hex code here, 001B5E. I'm gonna change it to a little blue there, perfect. Now, we're gonna have our form here, okay? We're gonna have our form, so let's say form, action. We're gonna come back in here and add an action. Our, our get form.o action is we're gonna paste in here, and that's what's gonna hook up our form to make it work. And we have to set the method to post and then we're gonna have an ink type here of multi-part slash form dash data, just like that, okay? So let's go ahead and save that, perfect. And again, we're gonna come back and set up an action for that, very, very important we do that. So for our div, and then we're gonna have another div, and then this is gonna be our label. We're gonna have a label in there and we don't need this HTML for, we don't need any of that there for now. We'll just say name and copy this down. And instead of name, we're gonna have a phone number. There we go. And let's add an input type of text is fine. And we'll say placeholder. We'll say, um, or do we need an input? We don't need, we don't need a placeholder because we're gonna have a label, so that's fine. And then um, type text is fine. And we do need to add a name attribute. So this way, whenever we submit our form uh, in our get form.io, we're gonna actually gonna see um, everything's gonna be labeled nice and neat for us. So we know where to, uh, what all the data is. So we have our input there. So this one here, we're gonna input, and uh, this one's gonna be type, we can say phones or sorry, text. And then we'll say name is phone. Just like that. Cool. So below that div there and below this one, but still within the form, we're going to create another div and this one's going to be our uh, email. So we'll say label. We can get rid of that there. Label email. And then input and email, there we go, input type email. And the name, we can set that to email. We don't need an ID. And let's copy this down, because below our uh, email, we're also gonna need a subject. So we'll say subject, and then we're also gonna need a message. So subject, and then this one's gonna be a message. And then for our message, we're actually gonna have, instead of an input, 
this is going to be text area there we go perfect so um for this type we're going to say um we don't need actually a type we're just going to say rows we'll say 10 name will be message and let's see so we have our name and our phone number so next our uh, email type email is going to be fine name we'll change that to email um, this can just be type of text and we'll change this to a subject okay perfect let's go ahead and see there we go we have it and this is the beauty of tailwind you guys adds these baseline styles so that's why you can't see any of the outlined uh, uh, text box or anything like that okay so let's go ahead and style this um so for our we'll do our form here um for action we're gonna leave that blank for now for this div here we're gonna display this as grid so we're gonna say grid anything above medium breakpoint will say grid columns two we're gonna give this a gap of four with full py of of two there perfect that looks good so far and for this div here we actually want to display this as flex and then flex column now for our label here i'm going to actually just um, add this to all the labels uh, all the labels are going to be mm, are we spanning so for all the labels we'll say class name i think i left one out we'll say uppercase text small py to let's just go ahead and copy that there we go whoops okay let's go ahead and refresh make sure there's no errors in there perfect so that is looking good so far so we have that now for our input this is for our input for our uh this text message here for this input for our text for our name this is for our name here so what we're going to say here is we'll say border dash two rounded dash lg uh, p dash three flex and we'll say border gray 300 and i'm just going to go ahead and copy that and we're going to paste it in here perfect and then what else are we going to do looks like i let's see border to Mm, border to we're going to add that to let's see here we also want to do it to our four number and what about our email so let's look at our email it's going to be the same so we'll do this for our email class name oh forgot whoa there we go and paste that in there as well so class name uh for for our email is going to be border to rounded large p-3 um flex there perfect and then border gray 300. so that's looking good there it's good of that a refresh now for our that's for our um email for our phone something's looking a little bit off that's okay why is our phone looking off there phone number border of border two rounded large p-3 flex that is what we want okay that's fine we'll come back and look at that let's do our let's do our email let's do our subject next or you know what we didn't add, we left something out here so we can actually so for our phone number this flex and flex column here i think that's why it's looking funny there we go perfect let's add that in now let's see for our email let's go ahead and add that in as well so it doesn't look funny so we'll say flex flex column and we're going to say py2 to add a little bit of padding in there perfect 
Now we already have the class for our email. So next what we're gonna do is for our subject, and let's just paste that, we'll copy. For our subject, we're gonna paste that in there. Perfect. Now for our subject, that is looking good. Now for the input for the subject, what we, do we need to add here? So we're gonna do the same, basically the same thing. We'll say class name, we'll say uppercase. Or sorry, that's for the label. For our, our um, we need a border too. We'll say rounded large P3 flex. And then we'll give it a border color, say border gray, 300, perfect. And <clears throat> that's for the subject. Now for our message here, let's give a class name, flex, flex column, and then PY2, just like the others. And for our message, let's style that next. We're gonna style, so we already have rows 10. Let's give this a class name. And what we're gonna say here is border to rounded large P-3, and we'll say border gray 300. All right, perfect. Now, um, we actually need to be able to submit this, so we should probably add a button. So let's go ahead and add our, our button here that says send message. Let's give this a class name, BG, and we'll say, whoops, 001B5, 1B5E, okay. And we'll say text gray 100, margin top of one rim. And we want this display width of 100%, so W dash full, then P4. Nice, let's give rounded LG. Perfect, that is looking good. All right, let's let's, uh, let's change a couple of things here though. Um, I'm just gonna get rid of that phone number, just say phone. And let's actually hook this form up, okay? So if we go to get form, uh, getform.io, create an account, it is free. Um, so I think you can only have up to one um, endpoint here if, if for free. If you wanna pay for more, that's fine. But I already cr created one, um, it's called applicants here. So um, I can use that one here. So yeah, let's just open this up a bit. So what we're gonna do here, let's go to settings. And I'm just gonna leave all this time zone stuff to the same. And let's see here, set up. And what I'm gonna do is just basically copy this endpoint right there, okay? Or this action. So just copying in that action, and I'm gonna paste it over here. Where's our contact? I'm sorry, our form, there it is. Pasting that action in there. Go ahead and save that. And that should be all we need to do, okay? And we make sure you have the method set to post, otherwise it will not work properly. So, um, and guys, don't use mine here. Uh, don't just, uh, I'm gonna put the link to the GitHub below, but don't don't use mine because um, I'm gonna close this account, so it's not gonna work. So let's go ahead and give this a test. Refresh. So let's see here. My name's gonna be Clint. I'm gonna say, that's a, a phone number, not really mine. My email at email.com. This is a subject. This is my message. Okay, so let's submit this form and everything should be working properly. So if we submit, let's go into our Git form here. You, as you can see, we already have that red dot. Here is, this is my message, phone number. How awesome is that, you guys? Employers are gonna be able to contact you with this form in real time and it's gonna be live because we're about to host this thing right now, okay? Real quick, before I forget though, there's a few things here. Um, let's just go back here. I'm going to refresh. So I think we're having some issues with our nav. So yeah, so it scrolls. We want this nav bar to close whenever we click, uh, whenever we click on, on a, on a link there that just makes sense. So let's close this contact. We're done with that. Let's go into our, um, our side nav here. Okay. And where we're going to put this, let's see, we're going to go to our, Basically, we'll put this, we just wanna run a function to close um, whenever we click on a link here. So on our A tag here, let's see, we'll put it in 
basically all of our a tags so um and only the ones on the on this top um on the mobile menu there so there we go i think that's that's all of them there so what we'll say here is on click and basically we're just going to run the function that we created earlier handle nav so and again this is the the handle nav function so we're not necessarily setting it to true or to false but basically the opposite of it of its current value there so let's just go ahead and refresh and so whenever we click on um, projects for example boom it zaps us down to projects okay so perfect all right so you guys let's go ahead and let's go ahead and deploy this thing to our own domain on hostinger okay so go ahead and click the link below hostinger.com slash code commerce. If you use my discount code, you guys, you're gonna get, like I said, when you pick up the 48 month plan, you're gonna get three months free plus a free domain. You guys, you get free email, all of that, okay? So let's just open this up. Go ahead and click on claim deal. Now we have several different packages here. Um, I like this one in the middle, 279. You're gonna get a hundred websites, okay? A hundred gigabytes SSD storage, gonna be blazing fast tons of visits, like I said, free email on here, unlimited bandwidth, databases, free SSL certificate, okay? Um, we're not using WordPress or Website Builder since we're coders, okay? And then you're gonna get a 30-day money-back guarantee, 24-7 live support, you guys, and my favorite here, a 99.9% .9 uptime guarantee. Your site is gonna be up all the time, okay? So go ahead and click add to cart. Again, I like this middle one here. Um, if you wanna if you want to grab the bigger package, that's fine too, or the smaller one. Just keep in mind for 80 cents, you can have up to a hundred websites, okay? For only 80 cents more. So let's scroll down here. Then yes, we're gonna be using our coupon code, code commerce. There we go. And look at this savings here, you guys. You get nice savings here. Let's go ahead and enter in your information. Click submit. Now, here we are, you guys. Now, I've already claimed my domain, so make sure you go ahead and claim yours. Just go to domains here and just click on get a new domain. Find your domain. Again, I've already got mine. So once you have your domain, we're gonna go back to websites here. This is mine, mycodecommerce.com. Sorry, hosting here. What we're gonna do, you're gonna find your domain in here, okay? We're gonna click on manage. And then once you're here on manage, this is for your domain, what you're gonna click on. And this is your H panel, you guys. This is where you can, you have all your email, order, accounts, domains, website, files. And this is where we're gonna upload our React, um, our, our V project, okay? So we're gonna click on is file manager here. Now let's go back into, let's go back into our code editor here. And what we're gonna do, okay, I'm gonna actually gonna close, uh, cl stop our server with control C. And um, whoops, close that there. What we're gonna write is, I'm gonna open up my side panel here, but what we want to do is create a build folder. So what we're gonna type is npm run build. And what that's gonna do is create our build folder off to the left here. So as you can see, this dist folder in there, now what we're gonna do, let's go ahead and reveal in Finder. Pull that down here. And that's what it's called for a Mac. Just open it up so you can see this disk folder here. Okay, and what we're gonna do, this public HTML, we're gonna go into that there. And we actually don't need this uh, default.php. So let's just go ahead and delete that. Now this in here, the assets index.html, let's just drag and drop that into here. And that is all we need to do, you guys. So we already hooked up our, we already hooked up our domain. Now it should take probably just a few minutes. It might take about five or ten minutes. Let's go ahead and check out my domain, which is mycodecommerce.com. Boom! There you have it, you guys. Look at this beautiful website we just created. It is now hosted at mycodecommerce.com. Yours is going to have your own unique domain. And again, make sure you list how to use a professional sounding domain. Okay, don't use something sounding really whack and it's just not going to look good um, to to a business to potential employers. Okay, our our form submits flawlessly. Everything is looking good. You guys, smash the like button. I hope you got some value out of this. You have a now professional looking portfolio live on the web. Thank you to Hostinger for sponsoring the video and ultimately helping you put yourself out there 
to potential employers. So thanks for watching, guys. Smash the like button, and I'll see you on the next one.